Hey golfers, it's Thomas Campbell, Master Club Fitter at Second Swing. Today I'm going to discuss and analyze a very highly commented and debated topic on our YouTube channel. That is Smash Factor. One of the biggest comments related to a lot of my testing is my Smash Factor number of my seven irons are usually fairly high compared to what tour average is you will notice that a lot of the times the smash factor or efficiency number with 7 iron has been over 1.4 in a lot of my testing. Now, there is a lot of reasons for how to get a very, very high smash factor number, but before diving deep into my smash factor numbers and how to influence smash factor, I do want to bring out one thing. Focus on ball speed when you are fitting. Ball speed is way more important than focusing on that smash factor number. Ball speed is easily measured and is very, very consistent across every different measurement type, whether that be TrackMan, whether that be GC Quad, whether that be any other kind of measurement system that you're using. So there are four different ways that smash factor can be influenced. That can be done by dynamic loft, spin loft, attack angle, and impact location. Reducing spin loft can drastically improve your smash factor number. And spin loft is the difference between dynamic loft and attack angle. So I'm not one of the biggest guys out there. I only weigh 165 pounds and I'm only 5'9", but I have no problem hitting my 7 iron, which has 34 degrees of loft on it, where I carry that club between 180 and 190 yards, no problem, and that is through efficiency. Now, the reason why my smash factor numbers are a little bit higher is to do with my attack angle number being a little bit shallower than average, my dynamic loft is lower than average, and my spin loft is quite a little bit lower because my attack angle and my dynamic loft numbers are a little bit lower. Um, for all these reasons, the spin rate when I'm doing a lot of testing with 7 irons, you may have noticed that my spin rate has been in the 5,000 range. Um, that is part of the reason for lower spin rates and further, more, further distance for myself here too. Now, everyone swings differently. It's important to note that there's not one way to deliver the golf club. The way I deliver the golf club just caused me to spin the ball a little bit less and get the ball to go a little bit further. I found a way for, as a little guy to be able to hit the ball a little bit further to keep up with my competitors. So there are five different items that we are going to test today on TrackMan. So we're going to take some, look at some numbers with standard golf swing, poorer compression, when I swing with a steeper attack angle, an exaggerated compression, and then I'll add in a game improvement 7 iron to talk about dynamic loft and influence and try and get that smash factor number close to 1.50 with a 7 iron, which is definitely absurd, but it can be done. So if you do like this content, make sure to subscribe to our channel. Give us a couple of comments on our channel as well if you can and give us a like on our videos. We've got plenty more content coming your way in the future. Let's get after it. I just hit six normal golf swings, and one thing that stands out right off the bat is that smash factor number. In a lot of our videos, what we have noticed is my smash factor with a seven iron has been fairly high. So today's video is going to explain why I'm able to get a smash factor number in the 1.4 numbers with a standard 7 iron. So this 7 iron, the 620 CB, has got 35 degrees of loft on it. 
it is the exact same amount of loft that tool professionals use. Tool average smash factor is 1.38. So if we take a look here, you can see my average smash factor there was 1.44. So I'm going to explain how this smash factor number can be changed, why my smash factor number is higher than the average tool professional smash factor number is, and what can be done to modify that smash factor. First, it's important to understand what influences smash factor. There are three important factors that do influence the smash factor number. The first and most important is dynamic loft. Now, dynamic loft can be influenced by many ways. First way dynamic loft can be influenced is by the loft on the golf club. Mentioned that the player's iron that I'm playing with right now has got 35 degrees of loft on the seven iron. Game improvement irons do have less loft on them, so naturally the dynamic loft is going to be less. We're going to test with a more game improvement seven iron and talk about the differences and I would expect that that smash factor number is going to get fairly high. The second important number is spin loft. So spin loft, what is spin loft? So spin loft is the difference between dynamic loft and attack angle. So spin loft does affect the smash factor number very, very heavily as well. And where you catch it on the club face. If you're striking it in the middle of the club face, that hit location, spot on, your smash factor is naturally going to be higher. If you're not catching it quite in the sweet spot, it's going to be less. So we're going to explore why my spin loft is a little bit on the lower side and why my smash factor naturally is then going to be higher. I'm very good at compressing the ball at impact. I would say my compression is excellent. Because I compress the ball very well at impact, what's going to happen is that dynamic loft is going to be lower. When you have a lower dynamic loft, that ball is, the club is going to have less loft on it, and it's going to go further. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try and not compress the ball as much and see what happens. I just hit six shots where I felt like I was not compressing the ball. I felt like at impact, the club was just a little bit behind, which is going to influence the dynamic loft. So let's see how much it influenced the dynamic loft. So my club speed actually was faster when I was doing this later swing. But what's really interesting is my dynamic loft was three degrees higher because I was not compressing the ball as much. So I went from 23.4 degrees with regards to dynamic loft to 26.6. So what happened is my smash factor number, it felt awful by the way when I was hitting these shots. I feel like I did not hit it very solid at all, but my smash factor number was now 1.34. So my smash factor number dropped because I was adding dynamic loft to the club one thing we did notice is my attack angle still is what's considered fairly shallow. So my attack angle was only between negative 1.8 and negative 0.9. So the next test I'm going to do is I'm going to try and hit down on the ball a little bit more. It's going to be hard to do because I'm hitting off a mat, but if I can increase that attack angle, what will happen is that spin loft number will then get a little bit larger as well.
Okay, I hit six shots with what felt like a much steeper attack angle to me. It kind of hurt hitting through this mat because I did not want to take too much turf. But I was able to get my attack angle two degrees steeper. So if you look here, you can see that my spin loft was a little bit higher than the standard compression. Um, so I was a little bit higher, which is going to cause the ball to spin a little bit more. My smash factor was 1.35. So 1.34, 1.35 when I had poor compression or I had a steeper attack angle on the, on the club. So what I'm saying here is because I compress the ball and because I have a, what's considered a shallower attack angle and because I actually draw the ball as well, is my smash factor number, it's going to be really hard for me to keep my smash factor number under 1.4 with a 7 iron because my spin loft is so low. We'll notice what happened when I tried to have a steeper attack angle is I didn't hit it as sweet. Uh, I got a lot of turf and I lost a lot of club speed. I mean, I, I lost a lot of ball speed. So my ball speed dropped three, four miles an hour compared to the standard compression. When I also had poor compression, my ball speed dropped dramatically there as well. So we're going to go to the other end of the spectrum here next. What I'm going to do is I am going to try and compress the ball really well with this 7 iron. So this is another way that I can influence the dynamic loft. And then finally, I'm going to finish with a game improvement iron and take a look at the smash factor numbers. That felt so much better. So compression is key. So those last six size shots, I really tried to compress the bowl with the 7 iron, you will notice that my dynamic loft was the lowest. So lowest dynamic loft at 21.1. That's fairly low for a 7 iron. My attack angle was pretty close to my steeper attack angle because I did put the ball back a little bit in my stance to try and compress the ball a little bit more. Naturally, if I have that ball back in my stance a little bit more, I'm going to hit down on a little bit more. Um, so the spin loft was also the lowest. Because the spin loft was the lowest, my smash factor was still the highest. So my standard compression and my better compression swings had the highest smash factor numbers. When I didn't compress the ball as well, I lost a lot of ball speed. Naturally, I lost a lot of smash factor. And then steeper attack angle, when I was catching more turf coming down on the ball as well, what happened is I lost a lot of efficiency there as well. So I know this defeats the purpose because there's no way I would ever play this game improvement iron, but I want to push the envelope. I want to see if I can get a 7 iron to a 1.50 smash factor. So I grabbed the, t I'm going to hit the tightest T400 iron. It is a 7 iron and it does have 26 degrees of loft on it. So it's going to have 9 degrees less loft than more of a 7 iron that I would play. So naturally we're going to pick up a little bit more ball speed. I'm going to try and swing the same speed and we'll just kind of see what happens. I don't think I have ever had a 7 iron with ball speed over 140 miles an hour. That was a lot of club speed. I might have swung that a little bit faster. This club just feels really light though. 1.51 smash factor because the dynamic loft was less. That last shot felt like a miss hit. Though so this felt incredibly easy to hit. 
I was not trying to swing any faster. I was actually trying to slow my swing down a little bit, but the swing weight and definitely the head style caused my club speed to be a couple miles an hour faster there as well. So let's take a look at the numbers. Okay, so the dynamic loft on this club was quite incredible. 16.6 degrees. I by no re was not even trying to compress or exaggerate this club anymore. Um, you'll notice that my spin loft also was about five degrees less than the next best spin loft. So that is why my smash factor was 1.5 on average. I was getting a couple there at 1.51. Very, very effortless golf shot. So <laughs> I got to think about playing like a, a four iron as a driving iron or something like that if the ball is going to go that far off the club face with this club there too. It just seems so effortless. Um, but yeah, so big, big difference is the attack angle, the dynamic loft, and the spin loft and how it influences how much that uh, smash factor number there is. In conclusion, reducing spin loft can drastically influence the smash factor efficiency number. I by no reason would ever play a seven arm like this and that is why it is important to work with a fitter to get you in the optimal window essentially. But what I would really focus on in fittings is more or less the ball speed number. Ball speed is way more important than focusing on that smash factor number. Smash factor, I think it's a little bit too much ego related. It's just another number. Yes, it tells you your efficiency number, but TrackMan, GC Quad, any other simulation system out there that's going to help pick up ball data is always going to be a little bit different with how fast it picks up the club speed and that can definitely influence the smash factor number there as well. But what is the most constant number all the time? That is ball speed. Ball speed measurement is more important. So I would pay attention to ball speed and not even worry about that smash factor number. Smash factor numbers are great with drivers but with a 7 iron, there's no need for me to have a smash factor number that high and that is why we need loft on a golf club and that's why it's important to get good gapping through the bag there as well. So I recommend working with a second swing club fitter in the stores or online. We also do take trades so if you notice that your numbers seem off with your irons we do definitely take trades in through our golf sticks value guide so I definitely check that website out there as well. And then we get you into uh, some better golf clubs there for sure. Thanks for watching. Bye.